Hello beautiful people, today uh, we're going to learn how to perform column chromatography and purify a compound. By the end of this video you will learn how to properly prepare the column, how to uh, load your sample and how to follow the column chromatography by TLC. Uh, this is our uh, specific system, this is a TLC. Uh, this is the spot of our product and this is the, a little bit of starting material that we are trying to get rid of. As you can see, there is a very good uh, separation in between the two spots. The so. molecules that we are uh, playing with are dyes, and we don't need specific uh, uh, methodologies like uh, UV light or specific stains to visualize our spot on the TLC. We can just uh, see them with the naked eye, as you can see here. These TLC has been uh, carried out using uh, as the eluent dichloromethane with 5% of methanol and 5% of uh, triethylamine. Okay, so now, in order to load uh, our uh, crude uh, compound, we need first to, either, which is in this round, round bottom flask here, uh, we need first to dissolve it. And uh, it's not very soluble in dichloromethane, but it's very well soluble in uh, methanol. So I'm going to add a little bit of methanol here to try to dissolve it all. So use the minimum amount of solvent. As you can see, this specific dye dissolves extremely well in methanol. And now what we want to do is to add a few scoops of uh, uh, silica so that we're going to then um, rotate up the, so the methanol away, remove the methanol using the rotary evaporator, and we will have our crude compound fizzy sort onto the silica. At that stage, we will uh, scrap the silica from the round bottom flask and we will load the column with it. I'm going to put another couple of scoops just in case. Okay, this is what it's supposed to look like when you swirl it. So now we're going to remove the methanol and the physisorb our crude compound on the silica. In order to do this, you want a very nice and slow uh, spinning on the rotary evaporator so you can create a nice and homogeneous spill. Okay, now we're going to load our column with the silica gel. We prepare here uh, our eluent, so it's dichloromethane with 5% of methanol and 5% of triethylamine. When we prepare this solvent you always want to use an Erlenmeyer flask to, um, to limit the evaporation of the solvent and you always want to keep Gerlenmeyer clothes, you can use, as you can see, uh, some aluminum foil uh, to do that in order, again, to uh, limit evaporation of the solvent could be, uh, because otherwise, over time, the composition of your eluent will change. So it's very important, keep it always closed. Here we have our silica and I'm going to make, I'm going to make a gel. Perform this operation always inside the fume hood because you do not want to break the silica particles. When you do this, you want to make sure you do not feel any resistance, at the, especially at the bottom of the beaker. You want to make sure that all the silica is nicely dispersed in your eluent. This looks a little bit too thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more solvent. Okay. 
this is the right consistency. The amount of silica to use depends on the separation between the spot of the product and the closer spot of impurity or delta RF. A useful rule of thumb to help you decide how much silica to use is summarized in the following table. Uh, next thing we want to add, so we have this specific column here. It has this frit. So if you don't have this, you want to put right here a little piece of cotton. In this case, we can already move on and put a little uh, one finger of sand on top of the frit. So I have here a funnel, if you can see it. At this stage, uh, we want to layer our, uh, our silica on top of the sand layer here. Um, what we want to do is to keep the two layers nicely separate. So what I'm going to do next is simply add some clean solvent to it, make sure that the stopcock is closed. Okay, as you can see, the solvent is moving the sand, therefore we can repack it easily that way. We want to make sure that the column is always straight. We we'll close this. We we'll give it a nice little mix here to this and now we can start loading this silica gel. At this stage we're going to start packing the silica. So start opening the stopcock and drain the excess solvent. To speed up this operation we can use a little bit of compressed air. We have this uh, uh, glass connector here con connected to the compressed air of the fume hood. You just want a nice and gentle uh, air and we can push down the solvent. So don't block it because otherwise you build too much pressure inside here. So any once in a while uh, reopen it on top so that you release the extra pressure that you build inside, okay? And now, as you can see, we are progressively packing the silica. Hold, hold this connector, especially because in this specific case we have two pieces. Hold it, hold both pieces together, okay? To avoid this to pop out. You see now it has been packed and we can fill it up again. Always stir this nicely first. At this stage the column is full. We want to dry just the top part of it so that we can add another layer of sand. And now we just refill it with a little bit of filament. The sand layer will allow the, the crude to distribute nicely onto the top part onto the top part of the column. So, um, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this is the residual silica that we didn't use, uh, with uh, that is in the solvent. In this specific case, uh, we have dichloromethane, which is a volatile solvent, and we have uh, triethylamine as well and the methanol. So, in this specific case, we cannot uh, recycle this, and we, when the solvent will be evaporated, we will uh, trash the silica. However, if uh, your eluent is composed by uh, very volatile solvents such as uh, hexanes, com combinations of hexanes and ethyl acetate, diethyl ethers, acetone and so forth, then uh, the silica can be reused. So you just put 
the beaker uh, in the back of the fume hood, the volatile solvent will uh, evaporate, and then that silica that will remain in, uh, in the beaker can be reused. So you can cover it with a piece of aluminum foil and uh, leave it there for your next color. Okay, but in this case, again, we don't have volatile solvents. We put it here so that the solvents will evaporate and then eventually will uh, trash everything in the solid wastes. Okay, right now, uh, so all the methanol is now evaporated. We have this nice film of silica with the fizzy sword, our crude compound. And as you can see, we can scrap it out very, very nicely. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna scrap it out, collect it onto a little piece of aluminum foil, and then we're gonna load it on top of our column. Now we can load uh, the column. Right here we have our silica with fizzy-sorbed, our crude compound. As we can see here, we have our layer of sand. We're now gonna uh, dry just the sand. We open the stopcock here. We apply a little bit of pressure to speed up the operation. Always hold it properly, hold the two pieces together and release extra pressure if it builds in. There we go. Now the top sand is dry and we can put on top our silica. So always use the little funnel. Let's try to do this carefully. At this stage what we want to do is to add a little bit of solvent to make everything nice and homogeneous and distribute it right. Just a little bit of solvent like this. We can open it now and let the column start. So now our crude compound will go through the sand layer and will start loading nicely onto our column. What we need to do though is to wash three or four times the top part of silica and sand to make sure that before we load the reservoir with the solvent, all our crude has been loaded on the column. Otherwise, that will just dissolve on the large volume of solvent we're gonna put on top here. So again, to speed up this operation, we can apply a gentle pressure. As you can see, the, as you can see, the, the crude is starting to um, be loaded nicely on as, as a thin layer on the silica and is already starting to separate now. So as you can see, the, the solvent keeps being colored. Then what you can do is add a second layer of sand on top. So at this point, that the solvent is now getting colored anymore 
we can fill up the reservoir. Again, always be careful not to move the layers of sand and silica. So go slowly at the beginning. Let the solvent run along the walls. Okay, now the column is running. This solvent here is nice and clean. So what we can do is we just transfer it back into the main flask. And what we're gonna do now is to collect in here the head of the column. And then we have here a rack of clean test tubes that we can start uh, to fill up. So let's go. Uh, the column is now running. Uh, what you want to do is collect uh, small fractions in uh, small test tubes and uh, methodically you need to check them uh, using TLC. Now, again, in this specific case, we are coloring a color dye, so we don't need uh, UV, uh, the UV lamp or uh, a specific uh, uh, TLC stains to visualize the spot on the TLC plate. And we can just visually look at them. Uh, but otherwise, if your compound uh, is just a, a very small organic molecule that is colorless, then yes, you will need to use uh, either the UV lamp, if that is an aromatic compound, or um, use proper stains such as permanganate, potassium permanganate stain or uh, uh, iodine. This is the iodine and this is the potassium permanganate solution. For large columns, there is no point in collecting lots of small fractions because they will end up being recombined. However, collecting only a few large fractions may result in you ending up with two bands in the same fraction, especially if the bands come off the column close together or if there is a tailing of the leading band. A useful rule of thumb to help you decide the volume of the fractions to collect is summarized in the following table. when you are performing column chromatography. The golden rule is never trash any fraction before you are sure you collected your right product. That is, uh, keep everything, everything here. As you can see, we have here the head of the column, other test tubes uh, there. We collected already and wrote about off the solvent from those test tubes that, where we believed there, uh, there was our product. Now we will check the sample by NMR, proton NMR spectroscopy to make sure that our product is in there. If that's so, then we can, uh, we can clean up. You know, especially in research when you are trying to synthesize uh, new molecules, it is very common that you get mislead and so you collect a spot that you believe is your product but in reality it is not. Therefore, uh, that's why uh, we don't trash anything. We still have all the other fraction and we will be able to track down our product this way. So golden rule, never trash anything until you're completely sure you isolated your compound. Now uh, the column is done. What we want to do is uh, to clean up the column and remove all the silica. In order to do that, what we're gonna do is to dry it using air and then we're gonna trash the silica in the solid waste bin. So using compressed air, we're gonna dry completely the column. Okay, now the solvent has been removed. And now always using compressed there, we're gonna push away the silica. 
open the compressed air slowly. Now again we increase the compressed air and wash it completely to remove the last bits of silica. Now this one will be rinsed with uh, uh, water and acetone and it will be uh, ready to be reused. Okay, so now you know how uh, to prepare a column, how to follow it and uh, please remember about the golden rule, uh, make sure you never trash uh, any fraction before you're sure uh, you have isolated the right product. When working with uh, uh, silica, uh, always try to work underneath uh, the fume hood and never uh, to, in order to do not break the silicone. So if you found this uh, video useful, uh, please subscribe to our channel and click the like button below. Thanks for watching and work safely.